Hello Zoho users. Welcome to our 5th episode of Small Business Heroes where we learn from rising entrepreneurs who are working hard and smart to scale their businesses. In today's episode, I have Georgia with me who runs this cute little business called Dog Gone Mold. We'll get down to the business and talk about how it works and the growth strategy, but first, Georgia, could you please tell us about yourself? Sure. Um well, I um I've been on this planet a lot of years. So I've done a lot of different businesses and um, I have my degree in economics uh, from the University of Missouri. Uh, I did graduate work and taught um, basic economics from the University of Missouri for a while. And then I decided to start running businesses. Um, my first business was in general contracting, repair, roofing. Uh, and then I um, started a, um, the first SBA uh, diaper service. So I used to do a, a diaper service that grew into a laundry. Um, the small laundry grew into a bigger laundry. I um, so I've been in business, I guess, ever since college. Um, and uh, besides teaching it, I decided that it, a better way to learn business was to work it. So uh, I um, grew my business, my laundry business, into two and a half million dollars, and then I sold it. Um, and I uh, went to Kansas City to become a business consultant um, in biz- as in Kansas City as a business consultant. I worked with small businesses to grow their businesses. Um, and one of the methods to grow a business where you have less cash is needed from you, the owner, um, is to do franchising. Um, my husband at the time, uh, my still he's my husband, but at the time <laughs> he was the uh, he's the dean of the school of franchising. Wow! Uh, and so um, together, um, Joe and I uh, came up with this great idea to um, help businesses franchise. Uh, the difficulty is that nobody wants to pay a business consultant. So uh, what we did is say to the businesses that were viable and that we thought could franchise successfully that we would um, take a portion of their franchise company and uh, do the business consulting. And um, so we did that. And one of the clients that we did it with was Dog on Malt. Um, One of the best ways for us as consultants to learn what do we need to put in the training manual? What do we need to do for processes? What do we need to do to improve businesses is to run the business ourselves. Um, (laughs) So we opened the first... um, Dog on Mold franchise. And uh, so Dog on Mold Corporate is in Kansas City. Dog on Mold uh, Dallas, DFW, is in the Dallas area. Um, and so um, that's how I, I got to now where uh, we've been running Dog on Mold uh, in the DFW area for about a year, a year and a half. So I, I just uh, went to the website Dog on Mold and it's a pretty interesting business. I mean, um, so uh, tell us more about uh, the business itself, like uh, how do you train the dogs, how do you like uh, perform the inspection and then uh, service the clients. So could you tell us uh, more about your business, please? Sure. So what is really unique about Dog on Mold is that um, we do mold inspections in homes and businesses um, and we use um, um, our secret weapon secret weapon is a dog. Um, and right. the, so when it's called dog on mold, it really is mm. that we bring a dog in. So the process <laughs> is that if you suspect that there's mold or you've had a water leak and you can smell stuff in your home or you're getting sick or whatever, uh, you call us and we come out and we have a dog that has been professionally trained by the same place that trains the FBI drug sniffing dogs. Oh. Um, this um, trainer um, takes rescue animals. So we're not talking about puppy mill dogs. Mm-hmm. We're talking about he goes around the United States and he finds <laughs> rescue animals to train. Uh, the two types of breeds of dogs that are trainable are German Shepherds and Beagles. Sure. Uh, beagles work very well <laughs> for molds and mold sniffing. Um, okay. And so we have Mason. Um, wow. uh, Mason is uh, specially trained. Now he can um, walk around. So uh, he walks around and smells the air, but he also will signal to us in particular areas. So the process is, uh, and in Texas, we have a um, certified mold inspector. So Mason's got accompanied by a human who knows what they're doing. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. They have the tools, the traditional tools for mold inspection that are moisture meters and, um, you know, uh, there, there are various different tools that they have. They can take an air sample if they want to, uh, if, if the state requires it or if the homeowner wants it. But even better than the air sample is the dog. And so right. the process is the dog would come in and we would take him throughout your home. Um, and basically they go along and just sniff on the baseboards, sure. uh, along the stuff. So, um, Mason will tell to us, um, that he smells mold and then we can go further with that. Mm-hmm. Now in Kansas city, if he finds mold, um, he signals it, then we can go further and we can figure out, um, how to clean it up. And then we can also do the cleanup. Um, under right. the laws in Kansas City, in Kansas and Missouri. In Texas, um, all I can do is do the inspection and do a plan for cleanup. There's a separation between who's doing the cleanup and who's doing the inspecting in the state of Texas. Okay. So in the state of Texas, we do, or you hire a remediation company that's different than Dog on Mole. So, right. but Mason is so spectacular <laughs> uh, and uh, he's not harmed. One of the biggest questions like, from people is um, he smells a substance that we know some people are, are get sick from. Um, and right. so are you getting the dog sick? Mm-hmm. Are you? Right. And the answer is no. Um, you don't have to drink septic to know that the septic tank smells. Okay? Right. <laughs> so, right. That's so, a good answer. <laughs> you know, it's just with Mason, he doesn't need to inhale right. it to the point right. that he's getting sick. Okay. Right. He's going to give a signal. It, it's like I just heard today that uh, the NBA is in Miami is is going to be using COVID sniffing dogs, which it's the same type oh, of concept. It? You can train a dog. You can train a dog to sniff anything. Okay, so can they um, smell COVID? Our trainer, I mean, yeah. So our, our trainer amazing. was. I asked our trainer, "What is the most?" Um, unusual thing that you've trained a dog to do right and he said that he had trained a dog for the cincinnati zoo to um sniff polar bear scat wow um, to see if the bear was pregnant okay wow <laughs> it, it's a dangerous thing to do to try and figure out if a polar oh, bear is okay. pregnant and you don't want to you, you don't want to put her under and and try and do this <laughs> and they're not polar bears are not really safe to be around for humans So right. the most ideal thing to do was to take this. They took the scat of a polar bear that was already pregnant and they trained the dog to sniff so that then they could take all different kinds of polar bear scat and the dog would signal, yes, this, preg- this wow. is pregnant polar bear. So incredible to know that dogs can be helpful at so many levels. I mean, the, oh, the s- so many different levels. Uh, the sense so of smell can help humanity a lot, right? But yeah. Oh, that's that's so great. So, uh, uh, I was gonna ask, like, how do they signal? I mean, once they uh, spot a mold or something, like, uh, do they st- uh, stand so there Mason, looking at you? I mean, Mason's signal is to sit. Oh, just okay. to sit. So, okay. Right. So he, when he comes in, he's got a service jacket on, a service vest, and his trainer is is the mold assessment technician is with him. Uh, we had um, one home. There are standard places that you have them. Sniff. You have them go around the bathrooms. You have them okay. go around the kitchen. Right. We were taking them all around, and we were at one particular home. Uh, we were in uh, a bedroom, and we were taking them around the, the edges of the bedroom. And in the middle of the floor, he sat. Okay, and he signaled. Right. So <laughs> the trainer then takes him out of the room, takes him to someplace else, brings him back, and again, Mason sat at the, oh, same, the same place, place. <laughs> no carpet. Okay, so right. then. We, I, so then we tell him, okay, we think there's mold underneath this carpet. Well, the homeowner then cuts the square of the carpet out. And lo and behold, for some reason, when the home was built, and it'd been built mm-hmm. like uh, a year and a half before that. So it was only okay. a year and a half old home. Right. For some reason, something had been spilled there. Mold had started to grow underneath the carpet. And Mason is the only one that found it. For wow. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so incredible. I mean, uh, if, even the latest tools and technology couldn't find such moves, right? I mean, that's right, right in the center of your home, in the living room, under the carpet. Who would know? Right. And that's that's so amazing to know. I mean, so uh, uh, coming to the mold problem, like for the homes, uh, how common is the problem in America today, right? And is it a very common and, problem? And, and that's a really good question. So. 
there's the problem is compounded by your sensitivity to it. Okay. There are some people that can live in a mold home and have no problems to it, have no okay. issues with it. Okay. okay. But then there are some people that have been exposed to mold before, or um, and, and then they become extremely sensitive or allergies. Like, you know, um, if you go to an allergist and have the shots done, they'll, they'll test you to see if you're allergic to cats or you're allergic to dogs to horses. One of the tests is for oh, mold, okay. uh, because some people are more allergic to mold than others. Sure. I would say in the Texas area, can, uh, currently, I, I would say uh, um, it, in terms of how prevalent is mold in a home, um, uh, one of the other businesses that I work with does um, duck cleaning and 40% of the ducks that they get into have mold in them. Okay. Right. So um, with, with, it, it, with us, um, in terms of our inspections, um, I would say one out of every five inspections is going to find, or two out of every five inspections, I would say, is going to find some Somewhere. small area of mold. Mm -hmm. um, but typically one out of every five inspections is going to require some type of major cleanup. Right. Um, and, you know, so that because mold loves moisture, and so Correct. it's going to grow in any area where moisture accumulates sure. and and is warm. So you think to yourself, okay, well, I'm in Colorado, so I'm not going to have much mold because it's cold. No, right. you're running your your furnace in your home. Sure. Okay, and then there's any kind of water leak or any kind of stuff you can have mold grow. So mold is has always been there, but it, it's. The better we've gotten more recently at tightening up our homes to be more energy efficient um, cool. also means that you're holding that water in there and you have more chance of mold to grow. Right. You know, so it's a question that's always changing in terms of what the number is and it's how sensitive sure. are you to it. I mean, if you've just had uh, chemotherapy or any kind of cancer treatment, um, you may be more susceptible to mold. So it's better off to have you know, somebody right. come in and do the infection and, and check it and clean it. Um, so um, one of the reasons that we, so the, how do we find our customers in terms of that is it's more educating the public to that there's a ability when you buy a home or when you sell a home. Um, if, if I sell you a home and I know there was a whole lot of mold in it and I didn't tell you that mm -hmm. there was a whole lot of mold in it, I'm liable. Okay. For, All right. Okay. Um, but if um, I sell you a home and I had no idea there was mold and then six months later you get into it and there's mm. a lot of mold, you can't really go back to that homeowner uh, unless, unless you, you know, mm. so it, it's, it's advantageous for people either when buying right. or selling homes, especially if you're going to buy a home, spend a couple hundred bucks and have an inspection done. Sure. Um, that way, if there's a small area, we can clean it up. Um, if it's a bigger area, you can go through and make sure that the current homeowner cleans it up before you purchase that right. home, that, that house. Right. So it, it it's the insurance companies don't like to pay, and they don't like to pay for mold. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course not. So so uh, coming back to the target audience, as you were uh, speaking earlier, like uh, the new house owners, uh, those who shift to a new house uh, recently, those those are uh, those are your hot targets, right? Those are the people you want to go to and uh, like talk about your business is that your target market um well what we've learned um through the last year that we've been working in the dallas area is that the target markets are the realtors um right. who are the trusted partner of those soon-to-be homeowners right. um, or home sellers so it's the realtors um it's the, uh, in, in Texas, it is the remodelers, construction guys, the plumbers, the HVAC people, okay, the roofer. Um, so those guys are the ones that are going to say, educating them to say, hey, if you see black stuff, you need to tell this homeowner to have dog on mold come in. So it's a tricky market because it's not a B2C right. sale all the time. Right. It's a B2B referral. Okay, right. so that I do have a B2C, those people who come to the website and check it out, go on and chat with us and stuff. I do have a few final customers who are smart enough to find us that way. But it's really an educational sale. So it's educational to the realtor. It's educational to home inspectors because a lot of home inspectors don't know about the mold. 
So it's, it's a referral partner. And so for for us, um, keeping track of our sales with referral partners is where we found we've made traction. Okay. So if, if I have, so I get a targeted list and say, okay, I want all roofers and I want the HVAC guys and I want realtors and realtor list is so easy to find the state of Texas gives you a realtor list and you know, you've got 50,000 names or whatever. So you can target what realtors that you want to put on there, but entering them in into a CRM system and then saying, okay, um, I'm going to contact them with a, an initial email that's educational. Uh, that's great. Okay. Then turn around and say every three or four months, I want to just call them and say, Hey, I'm around. It's been especially difficult because um, before COVID, the sales trick was to go to a realtor educational lunch or educational breakfast and you get all of them in a room and you teach them all. Now with COVID, it's more of a personal sale. Sure. And so how do you get that personal sale? It, it's trickier. And right. so I, I, I've got to, uh, the challenge has been to find my referral partners and educate them and, and then get them to be used to calling me when they're going to, you know, when you've got, and they tell the homeowner, Hey, dog on mold is good. And they'll come in for a couple hundred bucks and check before you buy this. Okay. Sure. Um, they're the ones that are going to do it. So it's more of a B2B play and right. that's where I really need a CRM system. Right. I, I was going to go there. Like uh, you use Zoho CRM today. So do you list all the referral partners there as, as your accounts? Yes. Yes. So, uh, so how, how is Zoho CRM actually helping you in your business? Um, well, I, I love the emailing capacity. Okay. Right, okay. So you can take a list and you can, you know, I, I, before COVID, I went to a live event and I got emails of 30 people and I came back and I put it into my CRM system and I put these are the leads from this te- this event in Texas. Okay. Now I've got a bigger list um, and I can email them all a target. I can target the area. I can do do it by a lead source. I can do it by a zip code or two or three zip codes. So I can say, okay, I want to talk to all of the realtors off of my list that I got from the state of Texas. And I load it into my CRM system. I want to talk to those realtors in Grand Prairie, Texas, which is the base of where I am. I pop in that zip code. Um, So I do the lead source as realtors. I do these in the zip code. And then I have a an email message, a targeted message that I have that says, dear, and you can leave it blank and then it's going to get filled in automatically from the CRM system. And it makes it sound like it's really personal. <laughs> you know, hi, I'm Georgia. And I want to talk to you about, uh, did you know that, um, you know, mold can cost up to 20 to 30,000 to clean up. And so you need to catch this now or whatever. And so you have quick emails and you can change the titles and you can do different campaigns. That emailing capability through the the system, the CRM system, is great, and and that's wickedly. And people go, well, nobody opens email anymore. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> they do it more than right now. Nobody's even on Facebook or Twitter. Okay, that I want to <laughs> talk to because everybody's like, I don't want to. So they will go to your email if you have a tagline that is conducive enough to them opening up. Exactly. That's what uh, I was going to say. Like uh, the capability of CRM is one thing, but the way you write your mail, the subject line, those are the real, uh, real home runners, right? That will actually make sure whether they'll open the mail or not. So you, right. you, you as a mark. Right, you have right. A, you have 11 <laughs> words is all you got. Um, exactly. Up, it's the title of that email. And then if you get them to open it, you've only got three, maybe two sentences to get them to look further. And that's it. Exactly. So, so you can't do any BS stuff is let me tell you about, you can't do any of that stuff. You can't do the, um, well, here are my top reasons to use this. (laughs) Don't do that. Everybody's so sick of that. You know, nobody likes the long news. No, no. And, and everybody has played that game. Top 10 list, top five (laughs) list, whatever, you know, it, it, did you know, (laughs) if you say, did you know, Okay, you wasted <laughs> your words. You wasted so of your eleven words. Three important <laughs> words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's this? So, 
you know, it's for me, it's you start out with what your unique is for your business. For me, it's uh, um, our dog is better than exactly. traditional tools. Right. Okay. That's right. it. All right. That, is is that your actual subject line you use in your mails? Yeah, I think I've used that. Before. Oh, that's that's yeah. so insightful. I'll, I'll go and click on that wheel right away. If I get the, get a mail like that, right? <laughs> Who will not go into that? And then the next thing you better do is inside that email, you gotta have something that leads to a picture of your dog. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and, right. You know, a, something that's a picture, maybe some bullet points. Okay. Baby boomers are gonna lead, read four or five sentences. Millennials will read bullet points and nothing else. Right. Okay. So and then. Generation Z, give me a picture, or better yet, <laughs> give me a link to a video. Right, okay? right. That question about Zoho CRM. So, uh, uh, I was going to ask, what is your favorite feature in the product? But I guess it's the email marketing cap capability. Um, yes, I, the email marketing is my favorite, obviously, because that's what I'm going to go to. Um, I like the the lead source. Um, I, I like the capability. We have 45,000 emails, uh, contacts in our CRM system right now. And that's just for the Texas area. Wow. So I like how I can pick and choose. Uh, I want HVAC people from Arlington and Grandpa and target it. And then it tells me this is how the size of your audience. Okay. And then um, what I like is the capability of seeing who's opened it. Okay. And, and also... Um, you know, you, you scrub the email list. I, I, I wish I could be better. I wish you could be better and do the scrubbing for me. Uh, but I know that's a hard technical thing for it to do. Um, so right now, currently, I have to scrub my own email list. So I scrub it when people come back and say they want to unsubscribe, then I take them off that list. But I also have the capability to see who's viewed it. Um, and, um, you know, what kind of response am I getting from this? Right. So I can test different taglines. And I can sure. test different, you know, I, I change just one or two things and then just see what happens in terms of the opens and then change the area that, that you're targeting to. Right. Right. So it's always better to go to the analysis part, uh, see the numbers, yes. open rates and click rates and then make changes. Yeah. And maybe also do A-B testing if you want with your two versions right. of the email. Right, so uh, all those things are there in this year. But uh, yeah, going back to your business, uh, Dog on Mold. Uh, so uh, as you said, this is a franchisee and you want to expand more further. So uh, if I can ask, what is your plan for the next uh, couple of years uh, with the business? So the current plan with Dog on Mold um, franchise systems is that uh, we, we will open 10 of them this year um, across the United States. Um, the the we're defining the markets now we've defined the process we now have the processes into a, a, a training manual and and down into one um i um we have had to adjust because of covid so i, I we're right. looking into and this is what i will given how the zoho meeting stuff goes i like zoho meeting and and one of our challenges is how are we going to train our franchisees virtually Right. And so the, the thing is that you're, we're always looking for different platforms. And, and um, if, if this works out, then we would probably expand um, into the Zoho meetings um, to do so. But our, our plan is to have a, 10 franchises in um, uh, the next year that are dog on mold. And then uh, the five-year plan is to end up with um, at, at least um, 30 successful franchises across the United States sure. for dog on mold. Do you have any word of advice for other small businesses of uh, USA? Sure. Um, so I, um, and this is my business consultant coming out because um, <laughs> before I did Dog on Mold, one of the things, one of my other businesses was SEO marketing. Um, so uh, I would encourage you to sit down and ask yourself, what is it that is unique about your business? What, what makes you unique? Um, write that down. Um, and so you try to come up with one or two or three lines of uh, if somebody gets into an elevator with you, can you explain to them within one minute's time what it is that you do, okay, and why somebody should choose your company, right, without talking about your competitors, right. which is talking about you, okay. So there's that. There's that message. Start with that message. 
And then I think if you just take like a simple spreadsheet where you say, here are my target customers and list more than one. Okay. So if the target customer is homeowners, what, what type of homeowner is it? Is it a homeowner of over $100,000 home? Is it a homeowner of a $200,000 home? Is it an apartment dweller? What is it? Okay. So list your different target markets. And then once you've identified who your target markets are, ask yourself, what is the pain they're feeling? What is your message to each individual target that they will respond to you for? Okay. Cool. And so if you put those in another right next to your target market, that's going to help you with your messaging. Sure. Okay. Because when you say, what do I want to send out in an email? You know, or do I want to educate them? Do they need to be educated about mold? Or is it just, hey, does your house smell? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. So it's, 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 if you have this on a piece of paper, it's good then to go back to when you're trying to figure out what is your message going to be on whatever your ad is, wherever your ad is going to be, or whatever your email is going to be. So target it. So for us, for realtors, the message to realtors is, Protect your client, okay? Your client is going to buy a house, so help them make sure they buy the correct house and don't buy a house that's got too much mold in it, okay? Or sell a house that has an issue before it's sold. We can help you figure out how to clean it up before you sell the house, okay? That's the message to the realtor. What is the message to the HVAC guy, which is um, show your uh, client that you're trusted and that you can tell them that they may have a an issue that goes beyond the HVAC system. Sure. Okay. So that's the message to him. So you see different things right. based yeah. upon who is your target. Right. Okay. My home inspector guy, home inspector message to them is, Hey, um, we are the experts in mold. You are the experts in other things, other things in the home. Right. But if you see something that you think might be mold, you should have us come in because you can't tell them it's mold without having it tested. Right. And that's us. <laughs> Right. So see the message, right. Does, right. but if you, and I don't care what your product is or, or what it is that you're selling, you figure out what your uniqueness is, but then you figure out what your individual message is to each target. And then that's going to help you figure out how to sell them. So, and, and then the other thing is um, what I know about, um, what I know about CRMs is they're only as good as the person who is putting information right, into it. <laughs> okay. So you can pay a lot of money for right. um you know your competitor. I don't even want to say their name. Okay. <laughs> but you can pay a lot of money for the most well known CRM system. And you could have it sitting there on the desk. But if somebody doesn't use it, then it's not gonna be worth anything. It's the same thing with Zoho. Okay. So it's can you enter in a little bit of basic information and then here's the deal is use it. Okay. Try to use it in a way that make yourself set aside 15 minutes a day to look at your CRM system and then say, what can I do? What am I doing? How am I doing? And then make a goal of, I'm going to send out one new email a week, or I'm going to send out, I'm going to see if I can get this many responses back a week, whatever it is. I don't care what it is Just set a small goal. And then, you know, don't get lost in it to the point of, you, I've never seen anybody waste five days <laughs> on a CRM system, but at, at the same time, force yourself to use what you've got. It's almost like a diet plan. You know, if you right. pay for a trainer and stuff, then you got to go do it. Well, you're paying for a CRM system. Okay. Then use it and right. then and make yourself use it just on a daily basis. Cause it's, right. it is all about, it's a mixture of activity, but it's pointed activity. You, you right. want to hit them with a rifle, not a shotgun. <laughs> and th that rifle shot can be aimed better if you use your CRM system to do it. Perfect. I've never heard anyone uh, comparing a CRM with a gym trainer. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's very similar to using a gym trainer. Now it makes sense. Like, uh, if, if I don't give my effort, a gym trainer will not be able to help me reduce my weight, right? Uh, similarly, if I am not putting my effort into CRM, CRM will not give me back uh, the desired result. So it's uh, such a great analogy, Georgia. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have this clip separate out and uh, use it in all the channels for anyone who wants to try CRM first. <laughs>
right all right so uh, i think uh, i won't take much time of yours it's early in the morning there and you have to have run your business there right and uh, so so glad you could do this georgia it's, it's it was really insightful it was lovely talking to you and of course we have learned a lot today right sure and i i, I thanks for the interview anytime you want to talk business i um uh, i'm old enough that I, i have no problems giving away <laughs> my um Uh, my tricks and tips now because I know it'll come back to me. Oh. So in in the whole world of karma, I know <laughs> that if I let anybody else know, especially if you want to talk about marketing or words or anything else like that, but um business, um I'll I'll be happy to to talk to you again any time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a bother, you know. Everybody loves showing off that they know something. So yes, I well, love because to say I learned it. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that people are gonna learn so much from you if uh, we can get more sessions from you uh, in the community, sure. right? Uh, so, sure. uh, so thank you again, Georgia. Thanks for doing this interview for us, and uh, uh, we'll we'll catch up soon next time for the next meetup. Till then, we will. Goodbye. I have appreciate it, Vinny. Have a great day, Georgia. Thank you. Bye bye.